Hey, how's it going? It's Walsh here, sick as always, and today I'm going to be bringing you a step-by-step, -step, in-depth guide on how I very quickly farm the Lighthouse map for money while risking almost no gear while doing it. Now, I will be breaking this video up into chapters and sections, so if you are a more experienced player, you might just want to skip to the map phase, or maybe the gear phase. Um, if you're a new player, though, I'd recommend watching all of it, because there might be some things you don't know as a new player. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you find something awesome, let me know. So before we start talking about gear, let's take a look at this map. Just want to say thank you to Jindaos, don't know how to pronounce it. Found this map on the wiki. Uh, sorry, everything is used on MS Paint. <laughs> Got the little lines. Try to color match them all up together for people going the same way. Hopefully it helps. Uh, just to give a quick summary of all of these runs. Basically, your main goal for 90% of these spawns is to run to this right here, which we call the construction road or the highway road if you want, and hit all of this then head to USEC and loot the base. Now, there are a few exceptions to this rule, such as the godhouse spawn. Uh, that's the computer house where there's like a little pink computer and you can pick up like a vertex or whatever. Now, I'm going to be honest, I pretty much always skip this house. I think it kind of sucks. I pretty much never get anything in it, so I either just run straight to USEC or I just uh, run down to the highway and try to get some loot. Now, for the armchair spawn, which is, you know, the spawn next to the armchair near the helicopter, I never check the armchair because it's like 1 in 10 raids I actually pick up something worth picking up. So I usually skip it. I just run into the mansion. That's kind of up to you though if you want to loot the armchair. It's totally up to you. You're going to go into the mansion. You're going to go check the garage, check the pool, and then keep going. You could check more spots if you like. But remember, my main goal is to get in the raid and out of the raid as fast as possible with as much money on average as I can get. Now there are basically two sides to Lighthouse. Everything to the left of where I've written Highway Spawn is basically what we call the loot side, and everything to the right of it is the PvP side. Now, that's not to say that if you spawn on the left, you'll never see PvP, or if you spawn on the right, you'll never get loot. That's just on average. I have many times spawned on the South Extract, which you will see in some of these videos, which is the absolute worst spawn, undeniably the worst spawn on the entire map. No loot, crappy spawn, you have to run really far to anything, and you're just surrounded by players who can just trap you if they want. But, which you will see in the videos, we got fuck off rounds, and we're paying attention to the spawns around us, you could still get things done. No matter where you spawn on this map, even if you spawn, you're like, crap, I got a shitty spawn, just keep going. Don't give up, follow my paths, follow what I'm saying, and on average, you will succeed and you will make money. Remember, the cheaper your gear is, the easier it is for you to stuff stuff into your pocket and die and still make money. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I rarely die on these raids. I pretty much select every server with 120 ping or less just to get into raids really quickly. My average load time is between like less than a minute and three minutes. I rarely hit three minutes, but I mean, Tarkov servers, it happens. Anyway, it's the end of the map. Let's uh, start talking about gear. So you just heard me talking about how you're going to be making a lot of money while risking almost nothing. So let's talk about what you are bringing and what you are risking. What I would recommend you bring is either a shotgun, an MP153, or whatever your favorite pistol is, for me the USB, I just really enjoy the sound it makes, with whatever the highest flesh damage rounds you can get are. Now you're going to hear me say this many times in this video, but the entire point of these raids is to get in and out very quickly and just make money. I'm not here to do quests, I'm not here to kill players, I am here to make money. So, what we want for ammo is fuck off rounds. I would recommend whatever pistol you want to use or whatever shotgun you want to use. These are my personal favorites. Um, you want to look on the ammo chart, which if you want, I can put a link in the description. Uh, whatever your highest flesh damage rounds are. Now, shotguns, it's a little different because it's like a lot of different options, you know, for range and whatnot. Flechette, in my opinion, is like the jack of all trades. It's pretty good at everything, but I would say it's not the best at anything. Now, I don't want to make this whole video about ammo, so just keep in mind, whatever you're going to be using, whatever shotgun, whatever pistol, whatever you decide to use, find really high flesh damage rounds, and if you see somebody at a distance, try to screw with them a little bit. Blast their legs, take an arm, make them go chill and heal, and just keep going. Just get the heck out of there, because remember, player loot sucks. When you're trying to make money, players are the worst thing to go after, in my opinion. So, let's talk about the rest of the gear and not get hung up on the guns. Very simple. Pick favorite gun, pick highest flesh damage, profit. So, always bring a backpack on these runs, even if you get the absolute worst luck, which you will see in some of the commentary raids I'm going to be doing after this. 
you will still be just picking up so much stuff. In terms of armor, you have quite a few options. If you're really poor, slap a pack on. I always recommend you have some sort of armor on. Sure, 80% of the people, it's not going to help you for, but it's going to help you against scavs, and it's going to help you against those other pistol runners or shotgunners. Uh, I would highly recommend you use an armor rig if you can afford it, even a really cheap one. Not only does it give you better protection, but it also just gives you more uh, slots to pick up stuff. Now, once you're like me and you just don't really care about money anymore, I know my money doesn't look very high, but trust me, I just bought... <laughs> This is my favorite gun. I have quite a few of them. Um, I would recommend you come in with bigger armor rigs, more protection, you know, just more slots. Like, look how much I can carry with this. It's like a, it's like a whole new backpack. So before we get into this first example raid, I just want to explain to you a few things. Uh, first of all, at the beginning of all these raids, I'm going to show you where you spawn. I'm going to have a little map on the top of the screen with a rough indication of where you are going. Now, don't follow the line exactly. I made it on MS Paint. It's not perfect. Um, and at the end of the raid, I will be showing you how much money I made. And if I got anything big, like a military tube or something like that, I will minus the 400k tax from the end price. I will also not be adding the Marin car key loot to the end price. I am not trying to inflate these prices. I'm not trying to trick you or mislead you. I'm going to show you as honest an estimation of money as I can get. This price is based on what it actually sold for on the flea market or what it sold for to the vendors. Anyway, enjoy. All right, our first raid, we spawn behind the uh, bait mansion, as I like to call it. This mansion sucks. Now, keep in mind, I know a lot of these things I skip can spawn loot. But remember, the main point of this raid is to get in and out very fast with as much money on average as possible. And on average, that mansion sucks. Come over here, check on top of all this around here a bunch of junk oh there might 30k easy so that just paid for our gun basically our gun and a good chunk of ammo no problem okay i'm over here so what's nice about the lighthouse map is even after they nerf it and they will just like reserve um even if they nerf it by 75 percent what's awesome about the map is it has so many spawns you're not relied on like one or two like oh i need to get this gpu spawn or i got nothing this right no there is stuff everywhere you're going to see this is a good raid example where I've pretty much picked up nothing. It's all been trash. And I'm still going to come out here with a bunch of money. It's almost impossible to leave this map with like less than 100 or 200k in your backpack. If you want a more in-depth guide on how I loot the USEC compound, I will be putting a link in the description of my USEC base guide. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You're going to pretty much see it in this video. I don't really loot the last USEC building anymore. It's really not that worth it. It's kind of trash. So... Keep in mind, I am very stingy with loot. I don't like to pick up anything that I have to sell to the flea market unless it's a big item. Like, I don't want to be selling corrugated hoses on the flea market for 20k. It's not worth my time. Even if, like, you know, it's t technically 10k a square or whatever, it's just not worth it. I want to get in the raid, out of the raid, vendor stuff, sell big stuff to players and get the heck out. As you can see, we haven't really found anything crazy, but, you know, we're still carrying, like, 160, 200k. The fuel alone is 110k, and I get a fuel, like, every, I don't know, four or five raids. I'm near fuel conditioner, another 30k. Open all this. Now, a lot of the times you could skip some of this stuff if you already have a bunch of loot from before. But well, that's another thing that's nice about Lighthouse. There is just so much loot all over the place that you're not relying, like I said, on one big ticket item. There's just stuff everywhere, and it makes it almost impossible to leave this raid without profit. So, because we really, really didn't pick up that many items, I am going to decide to hit the second spot of the train yard this right here which is the warehouse and after the warehouse there's a few options you can do you can either head to the extract or you can head to the third section which we will be doing because as you can see i pretty much picked up nothing check over here so we're gonna jump over here run around go through this little train car and what's right here boom military tube just like that another 700k in my pocket tnt brick another 40k so this raid went from being like a 3 or a 400k raid to a 1 mil plus raid, just like that. And this raid took like, what, 10 minutes? It's absolutely insane. I'm going to show you the exact price at the end in a second, and then we're going to move on to the second raid. Alright, raid number two. We actually have the worst possible spawn. We are at the South Extract spawn. It is pretty trash. It's very difficult to get loot here. It's very difficult to get anything. So what we want to do, we know there's a player to our top left almost every single raid. So what we're going to do, we're going to run towards him. We've got our fuck off rounds. Going to come up here. And we're going to see him right there. 
and we don't see him cross, so we know he's camping in that bush. So we're going to run around. Boom, boom, boom. I didn't know if he was in that bush or the further bush, so I wasn't sure. But as you saw, the fuck off rounds did their job. Took him out. Grab some free shit. Dump our insured stuff. Take his. And then once we're done with him, just give me one minute. There we go. And now we're going to head to the road just like normal. So now we have a lot of powerful information. We know that close spawn is gone. So the only other spawn on this side of the river is either at the really good spawn next to the Marin Key or on the uh, shore. So we're going to run over to the road. We're going to hug the wall here. Try to keep an eye on the mountain. Check all these extra spots. Check on the ground around them. Sorry, my voice is dying. I'm still sick, just like always. There we go. Nothing here. So keep in mind, at the end price, I am not adding the Marin Car Key loot. So don't worry, I'm not trying to inflate the price. I'm not trying to trick you. Open this up, what do we get? And we get a phase right. So <laughs> this is the drawback of killing a player. Now you have to do the bag stacking nonsense when you loot. I hate that so much. Come up here, bunch of junk. As you can see, I'm very stingy. I don't want to pick up stuff. There we go. Keep going, keep going. So we know someone can be up here because we haven't seen anyone on the road, but it's very unlikely they're gonna mess with us. They're probably fighting rogues or running through the base themselves. So, we keep coming over here. Now, I know you've already seen the USAC compound, but I'm actually going to show you where to get a tank battery. Um, there are a couple spawns in the base, but this one's the most reliable, and it's the safest, and it's already on your route anyway. But first, come through here just like normal. Gotta check the uh, starting area here, check the little thing. Yeah, free stim, not bad, not bad. Check in here, what do we get? <laughs> Fuel, okay. Gonna keep skipping a bunch of garbage, and the cyclone battery, so now we gotta make space. So whenever you're in these raids, constantly eat and drink everything you see if you are not max food and water. Getting your metabolism to 51 is game changing. Come up here, here's me being stingy, not picking up pretty much anything, because I don't want to sell stuff. And we come over here, and what do we find? A tank battery. Boom. Just like that, now you can get that quest done. You can also get some nice strength XP, and it's also worth quite a bit of money. Now, the earlier in the raid, or the earlier in the wipe you find it, obviously, the more money it's worth. But still, still a nice, you know, six, seven hundred k Gonna skip a bunch of overweight walking for you. So this raid we made 825,000 rubles. All right, so we have the mountain spawn, which is a, it's an okay spawn. It's kind of awkward. You can't really hit the road. So my friend loves hitting Godhouse, and I never do it. Usually, you know, that little path you just saw me look at is where I go. So I'm gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna act kind of like a noob. I'm going to go very safe, and I'm going to go all the way to Godhouse. Let's see if it's worth our time, and let's see if you can still make money playing really badly. So we're coming over here. We're hoping no one got the good spawn right there. We're dead. Coming over here. Going to go into Godhouse. Check around the shelves. Check around here. And we got nothing. Nothing here as well. Nice. That was worth our time, right? I know I'm kind of being sarcastic, but um, a few of my friends and a few people that I hang out with on Discord... Like, they're constantly telling me I need to stop skipping the godhouse, but man, it's such a waste of time. I make so much more money just by doing these raids, you know, 20 or 30 seconds faster than by going all the way out there hoping to make 70k or 100k. So anyway, once again, we're going to hit the USAC compound. And the main reason I'm showing this raid, besides just showing you why you shouldn't go to godhouse, I'm going to show you what happens if you don't get anything and what if you need to utilize the entire train station. So a little bit of a spoiler there, sorry about that, but... So we're going to come up here. As you can see, I'm still wearing the gear from that guy we killed last raid. Actually, I think that was three raids ago now. Not really sure. Come over here. We're getting a bunch of garbage. And as you can see, even though I'm getting garbage, I'm still not keeping trash stuff. I hate I hate nickeling and diming on the flea market. Nothing in the box. I, I, just, I can't tell you how much I hate going on the flea market and listing 40 things for like 10, 20, or 30k. Which, you know, the start of the wipe, I do. Because, you know, I'm broke just like everybody else. Anyway, keep looting the USAC compound. Look at this. We're basically getting nothing. I think we might have a little over 100k on us right now. 150 thanks to the badge or whatever. And we got CPU fans, 20k. You know, I could be at like 200k if I actually <laughs> picked everything up, but I can't be bothered with So we've gotten no loot so far. What are we going to do? Well, just keep on looting. Look at that. that. This one crate right here has just given us like an extra 100, 150k. Just like that. Come around here, some more keck tape, another 20k. So, let's imagine that last crate didn't have anything good. Let's say you got nothing, you just got super unlucky like my last crate. What would you do now? Well, we don't have the Northern Extract, which by the way, you should check for every single raid. 
come over here. We're going to loot the, the uh, train station just like normal. This is the first area out front. I heard a scav or something, I thought. Go inside, which is the second area. Check the toolbox. Get a bunch of garbage. Now, the reason I'm picking up stuff and putting it back is to get XP for the search skill and the uh, perception skill, I think it is. Go around here. Look at this. We're getting nothing. Basically nothing. If we didn't get that loot crate, or the uh, technical crate with a bunch of stuff in it, we'd have basically nothing. So, what do we do now? We head to the third spot, like I showed you in a previous raid. Come over here. Nothing. Literally nothing. So, what do we do now? Where do we go here? Where is the fourth spot to check? Well, we're going to go to the end of the train station. You can check all these boxes. All this stuff spawns things on them. That Drink some water. Get that metabolism XP. No problem, no problem. Go over here. So, we're going to check the fifth and final area that I would recommend you go to for the train station. Come over here. Get some more stuff. There are more bits and bobs around, but it's just not worth it. Sometimes you just got to accept your losses. We got kind of lucky with that technical crate. Jump over here. Jump across. And then we're going to run to the end of this road, and there's actually a car extract out there. So you always want to bring money in your container, whether you have a sit case, a documents case, whatever is on you. Slap like 100k in there so you never have to worry about it again. Come over to the car, and then once you activate the car, go in the bus, lay down, and you're done.
hey, if you made this far in the video, I just want to say thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, it takes me a long time to make these videos. I'm a complete noob with video editing. I'm just kind of winging it, learning myself, not looking at any guides or anything, just using Filmora. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to see more or less of, please let me know. I'm not really sure if showing the live raids is something necessary or not, but um, if it did help you, please let me know. If you find anything awesome, you know, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you got, how much money you made in the raid, and I'll see you another day.